Hi everyone. In the previous lecture, we discussed about how to estimate the small signal gain of a common source amplifier and what are the important parameters of a common source amplifier. And we also discussed how to bias a common source amplifier in the previous lectures. So now in this lecture, I'll analyze a series of common source amplifier configurations. So we'll do everything to far from finding the DC operating points to estimating the small signal gains. So shown here is a circuit which is a common source amplifier. The input is AC coupled through a capacitor C here and similarly the output voltage, the drain voltage of the MOSFET is AC coupled to a load resistance. Now first in the question the values of the drain resistance, the load resistance, RD and RL is given as 1 kilo ohm, the channel length modulation parameter is given which is 0 0.01 volt inverse. And at the input side, the gate bias is set using a voltage divider biasing. So the resistors R1 and R2, they set the DC bias at the gate terminal. The resistance values of R1 and R2 is given as 100 kilo ohms. And the source resistance, so again, the source resistance generally represents the finite power delivering capacity of the input source. And that's given as 50 kilo ohms. The supply voltage is 2 volts. The value of product of mobility into Cox, mu and Cox is 100 microampere per volt square or 0.1 milliampere per volt square. And the threshold voltage of the NMOS device is 0.5 volts. Now, what you are supposed to design in the circuit is, you are supposed to find the W by L ratio for this MOSFET so that the drain current is 1 milliampere. So you should remember that if I am going to operate a MOS amplifier as an amplifier, a MOS device as an amplifier, then the MOS has to be biased in saturation region. So the first step, we are going to find out the DC operating point of the circuit and see if the device is in saturation or not. And of course, we will estimate the W by L ratio for in, of the MOSFET to get the desired drain current. So first, when I am drawing the DC equivalent of the circuit to estimate the operating point, I will open circuit the capacitors here. So I will open circuit the capacitor. So the input source and the resistance will not come into the come into the picture in the circuit and this resistor RL will also be since it is open it's no longer a part of the MOS circuit. So this, this is what the circuit reduces to. So now if you are supposed to estimate the drain current if you are supposed to estimate the drain current first we need to know what is the region of operation of the MOS device. Now so I'll try to find what is the gate voltage at this point. So the gate voltage here is simply given by the potential divider. So if, if I find the voltage at this point, it's simply a potential division between R1 and R2. So the voltage, the gate voltage is simply the voltage across R2, which is nothing but R2 by R1 plus R2 into VDD. Now I could directly write that because there is no current flowing through the gate terminal. And so R1 and R2 are in series. So I can directly apply the potential divider equation to get the voltage across the voltage at the gate terminal. Since source is at ground, the voltage at the gate terminal will also be VGS, the voltage of gate to source, between gate and source. So since R1 and R2 are given to be same, which is 100 kilo ohms, the VGS is going to be VDD by 2, VDD is given as 2 volts, so you will get 1 volt. So we now know VGS. The next thing we need to find what is VDS, then we will know what is the region of operation of the MOS device. To find VDS, we know the drain current in the MOS device. So therefore VDD, which is 2 volts minus IDRD will be the drain to source voltage, will be the voltage at this point. I mean that can be directly derived by applying a Kirchhoff's voltage law in this loop here. So we can apply it in this loop, we will get it. And by now I think you are used to that, so you can directly write it. So if this node voltage is 2 volts, some voltage drops across the resistance RD. RD is given as 1 milli, one kilo ohm and the drain current is given to be 1 milliampere. So 1 volt is going to drop across RD. The remaining 1 volt is going to drop across the MOSFET which is VDS, 1 volt here. And you can directly see here from this expression as well, your VDS will be equal to 1 volt. Now it's given VDS is 1 volt, the Cuisine VDS is 1 volt and the Cuisine VGS is also 1 volt. So therefore the device is in saturation region. The condition for saturation is VDS has to be 
greater than VGS minus VT. So VGS minus VT is 0.5 volts and VDS is 1, so which is greater than that. So the device is in saturation. The moment we know the device is in saturation, I can directly use the square law characteristics equation to estimate the drain current. So to estimate the drain current, I'll use this. So 1 milliampere will be equal to mu and C ox W by L into 1 minus 0.5 VGS is 1 volt. We just found out minus 0.5 VTN. So, so I'll just, it's just, just a matter of plugging in the numbers. So mu n into C ox is 0.1 milliampere per volt square into half W by L is what we are supposed to find. And we have 1 minus 0.5 the whole square, which is 0.5 square, which is 0.25. I have written it as 1 by 4 here. So if you take 0.1 milliampere to this side, you will get 10, a factor of 10. And so 2 into 4 this side, you get 80. So W by L will be equal to 80. So to maintain a current of 1 milliampere in this MOS device, in the circuit shown here, you need, you need to choose a W by L ratio of 80. Now this is where we set the DC operating point. Now we will go, we'll go back to finding the small signal gain for the circuit. So before we go finding small signal gain for the circuit, we have to first draw the AC equivalent of the circuit. So when we draw the AC equivalent, we will short circuit the capacitors. For DC we open circuit, for AC we short circuit. And we will short circuit independent voltage sources. So VDD will be put to, put to ground. Independent DC voltage sources will be treat, treated as AC grounds. So now the circuit reduces to something like this. So you have R1 to ground, R2 from this node to ground. So now you can see that R1 and R2 are in parallel because they both share two nodes in common. One is the common node and the other node is AC ground. So they both are in parallel. So I can directly replace R1 with R1 parallel R2 here. So at the output on the other hand, the capacitor is short, RD and RL will appear in parallel because they both share two nodes in common. So they both are in parallel. So this is the AC ground which is a common terminal and this center node is also a common terminal for both the resistors. So that will be replaced by a resistance of value RL, RL parallel RD. So now we, we can also observe one more interesting thing here that is in the MOSFET small signal model you are going to have a resistance R0 across the MOSFET. So since R0 is also between this node and a common AC ground, I can treat, I can include R0, I can, I can just combine R0 with the load resistance by taking it as a single resistance of value RL parallel RD parallel R0. So that, this is the e circuit we have now reduced this circuit to. And if you see, we know all these values, we know the resistor values, we have, so we are yet to find what is R0. And we are also, we need to know what is the transconductance of this device. So we need to find GM and R0. So for GM, there are three different expressions. You can use any one of it. Now you know W by L, so you can directly use root of 2ID mu and C ox W by L. Or you can use 2ID by VO drive. That's a simpler expression. So there is no square roots involved because we know VO drive here. VO drive is VGS minus VT. And that happens to be 1 minus 0 0.5, which is 0.5 volts. So the drain current is given to be 1 milliampere. So it is 2 into 1 milliampere by 0 0.5, which is 4 milliampere per volt. That's your transconductance for this device. And R0 is given by 1 by lambda into IDQ. The value of lambda is given as 0 0.01 here into 1 milliampere. So you get 10 power 5 ohms, which is 100 kilo ohms. So now we know all the values necessary to estimate the small signal gain. So to find the small signal gain in the circuit, first we'll find what is the gate voltage here. If you know the gate voltage, then MOSFET produces a current of value GM times VG in response to that. It generates a current GM times VG, that current is going to flow from drain to source. So this directly follows from the small signal model. So it's better you visualize it this way, so you can quickly solve the circuits when you start visualizing this way, especially the small signal circuits. So if you apply a gate voltage between gate to source, if you apply a voltage VG, you can pictureize a current GM times VG flowing between drain and source. So this is excluding R0. Excluding R0, you will have a current of GM VG flowing between drain and source. Now, 
I can assume a current, I can just reverse the direction of the current and assume a current of value minus of gmvg flowing into the resistors. So I can write it as minus of gmvg flowing into the resistors. So that will be simply minus of gm into rd parallel rl parallel r0 into vg. That's your output voltage. Now all you need to do is find out the gate voltage vg in terms of the source voltage. Now that can be easily found by seeing that the gate current here is zero. So which means these two resistors are in series. The current is fully going to loop around this way. So therefore it's a simple potential divider network. So I can directly apply potential division and find the value of Vg by Vs to be R1 parallel R2 by R1 parallel R2 plus R3. R1 and R2 are given to be 100 kilo ohms in the question and Rs is given as 50 kilo ohms. So R1 parallel R2 will be 100 parallel 100 which is 50k. So 100 kilo ohm in parallel with 100 kilo ohm is 50 kilo ohms. Divided by 50k plus 50k you will get half. So Vg by Vs is half. The next thing we are supposed to find Gm into RL parallel Rd parallel R0. R0 if you see is 100 kilo ohms. And RL is 1 kilo ohm. And Rd is 1 kilo ohms. So whenever you have resistors in parallel, if the lowest resistance will dictate the overall resistance of the parallel network. Now R0 is 100 kilo ohms, which is much larger than Rd and RL, which is 100 times larger, so I can ignore R0. So I can approximate this combination 1 kilo ohm parallel, 1 kilo ohm parallel, 100 kilo ohm, as I can ignore the 100 kilo ohm and just write it as 1 kilo ohm in parallel with 1 kilo ohm. Because it's a very large resistance, I can ignore it. 1 kilo ohm parallel 1 kilo ohm is 0.5 kilo ohms. So 0.5 kilo ohms multiplied by 4 milliampere per volt. So milli and kilo cancels out, you are left with 2. So the gain is minus 2 volt per volt. So it's important, the sign uh, for a common source amplifier it will be negative. So minus 2 volt per volt. Now once you know this voltage gain from output voltage to the gate or gate to the output voltage. And we know from input to the gate. So multiply the two. V0 by Vs is simply equals V0 by Vg multiplied by Vg by Vs. So that will be minus 2 into half, you get minus 1. So oftentimes gain is expressed in decibels, so we take 20 log of the gain, which will be 20 log of 1, which is 0 decibels. So that's the gain of this amplifier. Now I'll analyze the next circuit, which is given here. It's exactly same as the previous circuit. The only difference is I've added a resistance RSS at the source terminal and also a capacitor in parallel with it. So previously the source was at ground both for DC and AC but now if you see there is a resistance RSS and a capacitance C in parallel with it. Now similarly we are, we are supposed to repeat the same procedures. We are in, the, in the problem we are supposed to find the value of W by L and there is some difference in the circuit. The value of RSS is given to be 0.5 kilo ohms and supply voltage VDD is given to be 3 volts. Instead of 2 volts, it's given as 3 volts. Now we are supposed to find out what is the value of W by L so that the, the current in the MOSFET is, in, is, is 1 milliampere. So first I'll draw the DC equivalent circuit. When you're drawing the DC equivalent circuit, open circuit the capacitors. So this capacitor will be open circuited and these two capacitors will also be open circuited. So once you open circuit it, you will just be left with this circuit. So which is what is shown here, we have shown the circuit here. So now here, if you see the circuit, you are supposed to first find if the transistor is in saturation region. So whenever you need to find if the transistor is in saturation region, you need to know the gate and drain voltages. By looking at the gate and drain voltages directly, we can say if the device is in saturation or not. So the gate voltage here for this MOSFET can be directly found because at the input side it's a potential divider network. It's same as the previous problem. So it will be R2 by R1 plus R2 into VDD. VDD is 3 volts. R2 and R1 has given us 100 ohms, 100 kilo ohms. So you get this as 3, 3 by 2 which is 1.5 volts. So this node gate voltage is at 1.5 volts. Now to estimate the drain node voltage, we can directly see that we can directly see that this resistance Rd value is 1 kilo ohms 
and a current drain current of 1 milliampere is flowing through that so the voltage drop across rd will be 1 volts so this node which is at 3 volts 1 volt is dropped across the resistor so this node voltage here will be plus 2 volts the node voltage i am not talking about vds i am talking about just the drain node voltage drain node voltage will be at 2 volts so directly but now itself you can look at it and say that your drain voltage should be greater than vg minus vt you don't even have to compute vds and vgs you can directly look at the drain voltage if it satisfies this condition then the device is in saturation region drain voltage is at 2 volts vg minus vt is 1.5 minus 0.5 which is 1 volt so it is 2 is greater than i mean vd is greater than 1 volt so the device is in saturation region now we know it is in saturation region so we also know the relationship between the drain current and the vgs so it's a square law characteristics device i mean we can directly use the square law equation to estimate the w well ratio now we what we have calculated in the first part is the gate voltage not the gate to source voltage the next thing we will do is to find what is the gate to source voltage we know the gate voltage is 1.5 volts if you know the source voltage then vg minus vs will be your gate to source voltage now the source voltage can be easily estimated because we know the current through resistance rss the value of resistance rss is 0.5 kilo ohms so we know the value of resistance the current through that is 1 milliampere the source current is same as drain current into 0.5 kilo ohm will, which will be 0.5 volts so the voltage across rss is 0.5 volts which is nothing but the source voltage so gate voltage is at 1.5 volts source voltage is at 0 0.5 so vgs is 1 volt we know the vgs is at 1 volt and the drain current is 1 milliampere so i can directly use this square law equation id equals beta n into vgs minus vt the whole square i mean in fact the overdrive voltage vgs minus vt is vov which is vgs minus vtn is equal to 0.5 volts so i can directly use it here and calculate the w well ratio and if you just look at the numbers the vgs and the drain current are exactly same as the previous question mu and cox is also same as the previous question so the value of w well will be the same which will be 80 the next step is we are supposed to find the voltage gain for the circuit uh, and just to quickly mention one point i didn't calculate vds here because i don't need to because in saturation region to if, I, if i just simply use a square law characteristic you don't really need vds for but if we ask you to find vds explicitly then you know the drain voltage is 2 volts source voltage is 0.5 volts so vds is going to be 1.5 volts so your vds is going to be 1.5 volts but it's not used in calculating the drain current or for any other uh, calculations now we are supposed to find the small signal ac gain for the circuit so the standard procedure we are going to short circuit the capacitors the moment you short circuit capacitors and then i'm also going to short circuit the dc voltage sources so i'll be left with a circuit like this so you have vs the input part looks the same as the previous circuit and similarly the output part rd and rl also look exactly the same as the previous circuit the difference here is that we had rss in dc analysis but in ac analysis since the capacitor is short the capacitor is short the resistance rss will be shorted out meaning the voltage across the resistor will be zero for ac frequencies for ac the circuit is going to behave as though rss is absent it's shorted out so you are going to the circuit is going to reduce to something like this now this is exactly the same circuit as the first problem and you saw how how did we solve that so the voltage gain for this circuit is minus 1 or 0 decibels so that's it about this problem so we'll take another problem where the biasing is little bit slightly different than what we discussed in the previous two circuits so the input signal vs is ac coupled to a circuit that is shown here so here we have not used voltage divider biasing it's a slightly different biasing 
and the supply voltage here VDD is 3 volts and the value of resistors RD, RL is 1 kilo ohm. So the values are not important here. I will try to find the AC and DC parameters and uh, yeah AC and we will find the DC current, the drain current and the W well value of the MOSFET. Similarly you are, to, you are supposed to compute the W well ratio of the MOSFET for a drain current of 1 milliampere. So here first we have to suppose to find what is the region of operation of the MOSFET and then we can appropriately use the use the right drain current equation and find the value of W well. So first to find the region of operation we have to quickly see that the gate current in the MOSFET is zero. Because the gate current in the MOSFET is zero we can instantly see that the voltage drop across RG will be zero because the current through RG will also be same as the gate current. So because the current through RG is zero as far as DC is concerned RG will be like a short circuit because I can re because the voltage across it is also zero I can replace it by a short voltage is zero so I can replace it by a short. The moment I short circuit it you can instantly see that this node voltage is drain and gate are shorted gate and drain are shorted. So you can directly see that this is source terminal VG minus VS is same as VD minus VS. I mean drain voltage and gate voltage are exactly the same. So therefore VGS equals VDS. Now if you satisfy this condition where VGS equals VGS, uh, VDS equals VGS, it's obviously greater than, VDS will obviously be greater than VGS minus VDN. So therefore this MOS device is in saturation region. So I can use a square law characteristic, the square law equation to find the value of W well. So before that we need to find what are the values of VGS uh, because if you find value of VGS that's the same as VDS as well. VDD is given as 3 volts. We know the drain current is 1 milliampere multiplied by the drain resistance which is 1 kilo ohm. So you will have a voltage drop of 1 volt across the drain resistance across RD. Similarly the value of RSS is given as 0.5 kilo ohms. So the voltage drop across RSS is going to be 0.5 into 1 milliampere. The current through RSS is also 1 milliampere because it's the current through source is also current through drain. So you will get voltage drop of 0.5 volts. So you can directly see that the voltage between this node and this node, the entire voltage here is 3 volts. Out of 3, 1 volt drops across this. 1 volt, 0.5 volts drops across RF, RSS. So then the voltage drop between these two terminals here is going to be 3 minus 1 minus 0.5, which is 3 minus 1.5 or 1.5 volts. Or you can write Kirchhoff's voltage law in this loop. So you can see that there is, uh, you can directly see that there is a voltage source here. So you can write Kirchhoff's voltage law in this loop. So 3 volts VDD will be equal to IDRD plus VDSQ plus IDRSS. So substitute that you can directly find VDSQ as 1.5 volts. And that is same as VGSQ. VGS is also same as VDSQ which is 1.5 volts. So I'll directly substitute it in this equation. The drain current is 1 milliampere and mu and Cox W by L. Mu and Cox is given as 0 0.100 microampere per volt which is 0.1 milliampere per volt square. So this is 0 0.1 milliampere per volt square and VGS is 1.5 minus 0 0.5 the whole square is 1 square multiplied by W by L. So from this 0 0.1 1 milli it will cancel out you will get a value of 10 w by l will be 20. So that's the w by l value that you need to have so that the device carries 1 milliampere current. So you should understand here VGS is fixed it's independent of w by l here. So VGS is fixed so then for given VGS drain current is fixed VGS is fixed so therefore that decides the w by l value as well. So that's it. Now we will quickly find the small signal AC gain for the circuit. So to find the small signal AC gain you can look at the circuit here, the first circuit. All we need to do is short circuit the capacitors. So if I am going to short circuit this capacitor, short circuit this capacitor and short circuit this capacitor as well. And I will 
replace the supply voltage 3 volt supply to ground i mean connected to ac ground so now if you see rss doesn't figure in in the small signal model because it's shorted out if it's shorted out the voltage across rss is zero so the current through rss is zero so i can just remove rss completely so you'll be left with a small signal model that looks like this rd will come in parallel with rl and you have a gate rg resistance between gate and train so here i i cannot remove rg because let's assume i i is the current from the input that can actually flow through rg so there can be some finite uh, drop across rg so i can't remove it in dc analysis i could remove it because there was no such input here there was only one path for current through rg which was the gate current and that was zero so the drop across rg was also zero so we ignored it but now i'll include it in the ac analysis so i'll quickly perform an ac analysis to find the gain for the circuit if you have a in, apply an input bi uh, see again this circuit is not very trivial to analyze it i'll try to analyze it intuitively as well because the moment you connect a resistance between input and output uh, you, it's slightly complicated it's not difficult it's slightly complicated you may not be able to write immediately for the first time uh, you cannot use an intuition to write the results but we will discuss an intuitive way as well which may not be as trivial as it was in the previous cases so we have a resistance rg and the input voltage is the same as the gate voltage which is vgs vi equals vgs um, that you can see from the figure itself the gate voltage is connected to input and source is at ac ground so vi equals vgs and now we are supposed to find the output voltage v not so i'll just write the kirchhoff's current law at this point so the current through rg should be equal to this current plus the current through rl parallel rt okay so in this question uh, i didn't mention it explicitly but lambda is given to be zero which means r not is infinity so now i'll just write the expression for this current so which is vi minus v not by rg should be equal to gm vi plus v not by rd parallel rl so that's the current through this v not by rd parallel rl plus gm vi and i'm going to bring the terms v terms containing v not to one side and vi to one side so gm vi is brought to this side so you will v not by rg plus v not by rd parallel rl and this is nothing but it's two i mean rg and rd parallel rl are in parallel so i can directly write this as a single resistance of value v not by rg parallel rd parallel rl okay these two resistors it's like two parallel resistors so i can just combine them into a single resistance this way at the input side you have i've taken minus common minus common so you will get gm minus 1 by rg into vi so finally you will be left with an expression v not by vi is rg parallel r not parallel rd or r rd parallel rl multiplied by this term which is gm minus 1 by rg with a minus sign in fact you can expand this you can expand this term rg in parallel with rd in parallel with rl as rg multiplied by R, rd parallel rl so you can treat this as two resistors of value rd parallel rl and uh, rg here so you will get rg plus rd parallel rl and uh, you can cancel out rg here and take rg to this side you will be left with this expression gmrg minus 1 into rd parallel rl by rg plus rd parallel rl of course it involves a little bit of rigorous mathematics but we will now try to derive it intuitively without resorting to this and see that it can be derived in a very much simpler way so to derive this result what will i do is initially we said these two nodes were shorted but now i'm going to remove this and apply a same and identical input vi here and vi here i mean it's the same thing for example previously we had input was connected to mosfet in response to that mosfet was generating a current gm times vi but also there is a path through rg so i can treat them as two independent paths so what will i do here i'm going to separate them out as two separate paths driven by two identical inputs driven by two identical inputs identical but independent inputs and then i'll apply the principle of superposition to estimate the gain and add the two gains finally to estimate the final voltage and then i'll add the final voltage or you can just add the gains also 
because they are just same inputs you can add the gains directly so first i'll assume this input is zero so that's what i've shown here this node is at ground so you have a resistance rg vi is applied here r not is infinity just to remind you so now you can see rg appears directly in parallel with rd parallel rl so finally if you apply vi you have a current gmvi flowing through the mosfet from drain to source so i can replace uh, i can actually replace this resistance rg and model it as R, rd parallel rl parallel rg as a single resistance so the voltage v01 because of this input vi is going to be minus of gmvi you can write this as a current minus gmvi flowing through this resistance so the voltage drop across this will be minus gmvi into rd parallel rl parallel rg so that's what we get the second approach is i'm going to the second uh, part of this question i'm going to assume this input is zero and this input is present so in superposition you assume the other input is zero so now i'll try to find the gain from this point to the output node since this node is gate node is at zero vgs is zero so because vgs is zero there is no gm vgs component this current itself is zero so there is no current and there is only one current here which is from input to output and look at this let's say there is some current flowing through the gate with through the gate resistance rg the same current has to flow through rd parallel rl as well because this current is zero here so the same current has to flow through that so these two resistors share one node in common same current flows through them so therefore they both are in series now because they both are in series i can directly apply potential division voltage division to find the output voltage so i'm calling it as output as vo2 it's simply rd parallel rl by rg plus rd parallel rl so i have one expression which is this minus of gm into rg parallel rd parallel rl the other one is the potential divider which is rd parallel rl by rg plus rd parallel rl so we'll just add the two equations so remember see here there is the sign is positive here because it's a simple potential division so we'll add the two gains we'll get this term gm into the the resistances in parallel and the second term here now you can quickly observe that rg parallel rd parallel rl can be written as rg into so i i, I can treat them as two resistors of value rg and rd parallel rl in parallel so when i write it this way and take this term uh, and i and i'm going to take this term common out okay so i'll be left with in fact i'm just going to take this term common out so i've taken this term common out so i'll be left with gm into rg so we'll have gm minus gm into rg plus 1 so 1 minus gm into rg is what i'm going to get and from this if i take minus common out so i'll be left with gm rg minus 1 into this term and this is exactly same as what we derived some moments ago from an exact analysis So in the next lecture we'll start with other single stage amplifier configurations and probably discuss some uh, problems on how to understand the bias and small signal gain uh, for single stage other single stage amplifiers